Hi there, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I am going to show you how to crochet a snowflake. I have these three snowflakes here that I will be doing tutorials for and today we're going to start with this one here. And this project is suited for someone with a little bit of crochet experience. I do have my beginner crochet series that shows you all the stitches you need to know for this tutorial. I will not be showing each stitch. Basically, we're doing a single crochet, double crochet, and a chain stitch. There is a pico that we'll be doing, and I'll be showing you how to do that. Now for this project, what you will need is a number three cotton thread. I'm using a cream color. You could use any color you like. You could also use the number 10 cotton thread, but you'd have to use a smaller crochet hook for that. For this one, I'm using a two and a half millimeter or a B1 crochet hook. You'll need a darning needle and some scissors. We are going to be starching this as well, and I'll be putting a link for that in the description box below. And so let's get started. All right, so starting with round one, you wanna leave yourself quite a long tail, maybe around 12 inches or so, and you want to do five wraps around your baby finger. If you're using the number 10 thread, you'd wanna do seven wraps. So, doing five wraps around your small finger and then just pull that off your finger and then I'm going to just flip it over so that the tail is over to the right <clears throat> and then just sort of pinch that in your thumb and then put your hook in through the ring and you're going to grab the yarn from behind and this will be a little bit awkward the tension will be a little bit hard but Grab your working yarn in from behind and bring that in through the circle. There we go. That's the trickiest part. And then do a chain one to fasten that. And that's your beginning circle. So start with a chain three. And then you'll do three double crochets into the ring. And again, I have the beginner crochet series that shows you how to do all of these stitches. Um, yeah, so there's three. So that's your first cluster. Now you'll do a chain nine. And then you'll do a cluster of four double crochets into the circle. And the reason why I uh, say this is for more advanced crocheters is just that working with the finer yarn and smaller crochet hook can be a little bit awkward if you're new to crochet. If you feel proficient, you certainly can take this project on because it, it is a fairly easy pattern. So there's four, you can just push that over to the right and then do another, oh, excuse me, and then do another chain nine. There's nine. And then you'll do four double crochets, chain nine, and you'll repeat that four more times until you have six clusters and six chain nines. And I'll see you at the end of this row. Now coming to the end of row one, there's six clusters, and I just finished my sixth chain nine. And we'll just join this round by doing a slip stitch into the third chain of your beginning chain three. And I like to go into the top loop and the back loop when I'm doing this and just do a slip stitch. And it can be a little bit tight working into that chain three. And there you go. So that's the end of round one. For round two, you'll chain three. And then you're going to do a double crochet three together stitch. 
and so you need three stitches so you want to go back and make sure you have three stitches to work into so go into the base of this very st first stitch here it's a little bit hard to see but do a double crochet into the top of that first stitch and you're just going to complete half that double crochet then you'll work another double crochet into the top of the next stitch and again you'll just work half that double crochet so you'll have three loops on your hook and then do one more double crochet into the top of that last stitch work half the double crochet so that you have three loops on your hook or four loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through all four loops now you'll chain four and then working into your chain nine space and you want to make sure that the stitches are flat and facing up towards you you'll work a single crochet into the middle top of that chain nine space now you'll chain three and this is going to be the pico and to create that what you want to do is I'm not sure if you can see this but you want to slip stitch into the front two posts of that single crochet so put your hook under those front two posts just like that and yarn over and bring your yarn through those two posts and through that stitch there and that's your pico now you'll chain four and then you're going to come down into your next cluster and here we're going to work a double crochet four together stitch so yarn over and begin a crochet down into the first double crochet of that cluster going under both loops and work half your double crochet then work a double crochet into the next stitch but again only work half that double crochet and you'll have three loops on your hook and then work a double crochet into the next stitch and just work half of that double crochet and then do a double crochet into the last stitch and working half of that stitch you'll have five loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all five loops and that is that stitch done and then you'll chain four and you'll repeat this pico into the chain nine space and this double crochet four together stitch all the way around so four more times if you feel comfortable you can go ahead and do that but i'll just do it one more time here if you want to see that again otherwise you can just fast forward so again working into your chain nine space keeping your stitches nice and flat work your single crochet into the middle of that chain nine now we'll do the pico so chain three and then come down and do a slip stitch going into the front two posts of the single crochet and just put your hook under those front two posts and do a slip stitch and there's your pico then chain four and then your work you'll work your double crochet four together stitch into the top of this next cluster so going into that very first stitch with a double crochet work half of that double crochet start a double crochet into the next stitch and work half of that double crochet do a double crochet into the next stitch only work half that double crochet and do a double crochet into the last stitch work half that double crochet and you'll have five loops on your hook and yarn over and pull through all five loops so carry on repeating that pattern all the way around and this will be kind of wonky but that'll work out later on when we do the starching all right so coming to the end of this round i've worked my last pico in the chain nine space i have my chain four 
and then we'll just finish this round by doing a slip stitch into the third chain of the beginning chain three and just do a slip stitch and then you can fasten off but leave yourself a nice long tail be and uh, thread your darning needle on and so we're going to create a little hangy loop and you can make this loop any length you like but what you want to make sure of is that the thread isn't twisted at all so uh, I'm going to flip this over and start stitching into the back of the snowflake into the back of your work and just picking up a couple of loops there and just make a bit of a secure stitch there and then I'm going to come up and and this is just a personal thing I'm going to come over here to this side here and I'm going to come up in this direction so you sort of have to fiddle with this depending on how it's threaded in and that's a nice straight straight uh, thread there and then I'll do one more little extra stitch here just to secure the loop and again you can sew this in any way you like I just like to make it nice and secure and then lay it around nice like this and bring the stitch back down into this next stitch on the other side here working into the back of the snowflake and see how that twisted so what you want to do is just sort of roll the the thread to get that twist out of it um, so I twirled it just to get that twist out and I think that's a pretty nice size loop and then I'll just come back down into that same stitch to create a little secure kind of um, knot like that and then you can go ahead and darn in your tail ends and then next we are going to starch the snowflake and if you know how to starch snowflakes you can skip this part all right so what you'll need is some type of a foam board i just have a thin foam board here you could use a piece of cardboard or a thicker foam you could even use a few layers of towel if you like and then i'm just putting a fabric placemat down to help absorb some of the liquid and then you're going to need your sugar starch solution and so see the tutorial on that in the description box below and then we have our snowflake all ready to go and you just need some straight pins so before you dip your snowflake into the sugar solution you want to sort of pre-press this maybe just hand press it or use a steam uh, iron and pre-shape it before you begin making sure that everything is lined up nicely and once your solution has cooled down all you do is dip your snowflake into the solution and wring it out and it doesn't take very much of this sugar starch at all and then all you do is lay it flat and I have a rag here to clean my hands because this solution is quite sticky and I'll just put this out of the way and then just take your straight pins and shape your snowflake so I like to start up in one corner and then work symmetrically work to the other side and pull that a little bit taunt um, and then go over to the other top corner there and this is very sticky and so you just want to create like a symmetrical um, shape and where you place your pins there will be a bit of a point and then we'll just do these last two sides here and again just trying to make it as even as possible and it's as easy as that and then once it's pinned you can kind of fuss it with it a little bit and just shape it and push it down and lay it flat and then you can't really see it here but just pull your hanging tag up and make that nice and flat and there you go and then you just want to let that dry completely and you are done and here it is 
and this is all dried and I just left it overnight. And isn't that just so pretty? The starching works so well to make this nice and stiff. And you could use this to hang on the Christmas tree or as gift tags. And I will be doing a tutorial for this snowflake pattern here and for this snowflake pattern here. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when those tutorials come up. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video.